everyone, this is Elisa from Anaya's Toy Box Crochet and I'm here to tell you what I've been up to. And here it is. This is the Hug Me Shawl. I used it, I used DK Colors in the colorway Sunshine that was um, gifted to me by Diana in our yarn swap. And I love it. It's really, really nice shawl. It was, it's really easy to work up. It's a, a pattern by Corsetta Laws or Seta from Seta's Place is really pretty um i'm just gonna i had a little bit of trouble with it i had a little trouble understanding what she was trying to say and if you buy this pattern you will not have the troubles i had i did not buy this pattern i won this pattern um i participated in um z from zelda nrj's birthday cal and i won this pattern so i only got the written if you get the video, you'll totally understand how it works and what happens because she, I'm sure she's great. Like she shows it to you so you'll understand what to do. I wasn't sure where to start this part and I wasn't sure how long to do it and I almost made it really, really big until I finally clicked what it, she, it was she wanted me to do. But anyways, I worked on this and I was very happy to work on this, especially since it was draping over my lap because of what happened earlier this week. So I believe it was on Sunday. Uh, there was a buzzing in our, you know, in our door, like, a, and it was a fireman. So of course I let them in. They came in, I didn't ask any questions because they're firemen and they need to do their job. So they did their job and they left. And then I asked my neighbor if she knows what happened. And she said, yes, what happened was she was in the basement doing some stuff and then she spilled some gas and so she called 311 to find out what's happening and they sent the firemen and the firemen found nothing um I have to assume that the firemen were looking for like real emergencies like really really big emergencies uh and so they did a follow-up and they sent an inspector and as soon as the inspector came he turned off the gas he it are the pipes in the building, around the building, was so eroded, it was dangerous to have the gas on. Um, so what does that mean for us? It meant, of course, we can't cook because we have no gas on our stoves. But you know, our heating and our hot water is also linked to the gas. Yeah, <laughs> it is. And so it was cold, not not super cold, but uncomfortably cold. Uh, not so that you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to die, but enough for you to be uncomfortable. So it was cold in our apartment and having a shawl to work on was very, very nice because it had a dripped over my lap as I was working on it, which I usually don't. And it kept my, uh, you know, my thighs and warm and everything as I was working on it. So it was nice and I finished it because, you know, what else was I going to do but try to keep myself warm with it? So it's beautiful. I love it. Thank you, Diana, for the yarn. And thank you, Z. I know you don't watch my videos, but thank you, Z, for the pattern. I really enjoyed it. So I have been doing a lot of stuff. Um, I finished my pattern, uh, the fairy that I had to make. So I made a little goth fairy. Here she is. She is in testing right now, but even though she's in testing, uh, her pattern won't be available until October, <laughs> not October, April. So I just thought I'll just pop in and show it. Hopefully I'll pop in later when her pattern is available to let you know about it. I came up with this idea of giving her, can you see it? A little belly button ring right here. This is just a regular jump ring, you know, that you put on jewelry. And I put like a little bit on her necklace too to give her a little bit of pizzang. But there she is. She's my goth fairy. The reason I made a goth fairy is uh, she's for the magazine I contribute to, which is in the Rand magazine. And next month's is fairies. And seriously, I did not have... Uh, I've been struggling for a little while. And normally I would think... Ooh, what can I do besides a fairy that's kind of magical? Like once in for a different magazine, I did a, a kitty corn. This time I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to do a fairy. But obviously I want it to be different. So I decided, I decided, not decided, I decided to make a goth fairy. So there she is. This 
video is going <laughs> to have a lot of gifted yarns. This yarn right here, can I see uh, the black yarn right there was gifted to me uh, by Yarn Hag Ryan. It is uh, the Mary Maxim Amikurumi yarn. And I'm so, you know, I'm so grateful. I really needed black and I didn't have any other black because I used it up. Um, the rest, the skin color, can, am I pointing in the right place? I have my camera angle different for some reason. The skin color here is Paintbox DK. Uh, the gray is La Mia, the gray on the socks, if I am pointing in the right place, is uh, La Mia uh, cotton. And uh, the wings are made out of metallic paint box. Uh, anyways, I had a lot of fun with her. I did. Uh, even though I was designing her. Um, I, I think I've been designing dolls for so long that they come easier to me than other stuff because I did not struggle for this one as I did with the, the bird. Uh, she was she was fun to make. Uh, a little tedious because I I was really in the mood of just looking at a pattern and making it. Uh, but yeah, whatever. That's what it was. Uh, this one, even though it's my pattern, uh, if you recall, somebody asked me if they could do, if I could make an edit where you could uh, sew the belly on. I made the edit and I made most of the shark, but I didn't finish it. Uh, so I figured, hey, why keep this for so long? Let me finish the shark. So I finished the shark. There he is. So that one, there wasn't much left to do. I just needed, whoops, why did I put him that way? Let me put him this way. Uh, I just needed to do the fins. Yeah, basically all the fins. Because I had already made the tongue and the belly and the body. So all I had to do was make the back fins, those like spiky fins on the sides and the top fin and the side fins. So it wasn't a big project. It was just something that was just sitting in my whip pile for nothing. <laughs> and then my big project of the week. This is my big project of the week because I made a tutorial of it. And oh my goodness, I still have to weave in ends. Oh my goodness. I have a new appreciation for all those people who taught me how to crochet. Because I learned how to crochet uh, basic stitches from my mom and anything more compli complicated was from YouTube. And I watched so many crochet videos and I watched so many tutorials and I gotta tell you, thank you. I had no idea how hard it was to do what you did. But this is the bunny I just finished making for my tutorial. The tutorial part three is still up to uploading. I thought I'd do it all in one part and then I found out it was a three hour video. Actually, I was planning to make this video before. But uh, yeah, my phone didn't have any space because of this big bunny tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I mean, it is not, it's not a bag of day tutorial. It's not professional in any way. I chat too much. Uh, the video is long and rambly. Uh, but hopefully you learn how to make this. Anyways, this is a uh, bunny spelled B-U-N-N-I-E um, or bunny. I suppose. Uh, yeah, so she is a uh, paid for pattern in both my Ravelry and Etsy stores. Uh, she comes with uh, a dog and a bear. So it's like a set of uh, three patterns together in the, it's called Animals in Clothing. Or you could just look at my tutorial if it ever finishes uploading, because seriously, it has been uploading forever. I kept it like uploading overnight and it just stopped that night. And when I woke up, I saw, why isn't it finished? And I had to turn on the computer again. Well, not turn on the computer. I had to wake up the computer and then it started uploading again. I'm like, geez, this is going to take forever. So as we speak, part three is being uploaded. Whew. <laughs> I was planning to make two bunny tutorials because I have two bunny patterns that I've already done. But seriously, I'm just making this one. Uh, so the yarn that I used, the body, is made with Premier. Um, I think it's every day. Premier every day in the colorway Chinchilla. And the dress is made with Caron Simply Soft in the color Soft Green. I had fun making it, but 
you know, it was kind of fun crocheting with you guys, like, you know, saying what I'm doing and everything. What was hard was getting a table. Being able to be in a place where there's no background noise and actually having a table. Like, I could come to my bedroom and film like right I am right now uh, with no background noise but oh, because the door is closed. But I don't have a table. I, I mean, we have a bed and it takes up pretty much the whole space in this room. A bed and a chester. Um, I don't have space for a table. I don't have any tables. My daughter has a table that she works on, but she's working on it all day at school. And we have the dining room table. And I had no, I was sitting with my son all this time. Uh, he wanted me to sit with him while I was in class and I was doing it. But now he doesn't need me quite as much anymore. So I was able to work, work on it while my, my husband was not on me meetings. He was there with me, beside me, but he was working. And whenever he was on a meeting, I just turned it off and I waited for the next one. Yeah, it was fun to do, but I'm not in a rush to do another one. I was planning on it, but I'm not going to. Anyway, so then um, I have a bunch of yarn that I've had for a very long time. Um, it's been in my stash for a while. They're the, what's it called? I don't know how to pronounce it. I, I say Shippiji's Katona. This is the yarn, Shippiji's Katona. And I thought I'm going to work through it. But you know, the thing is they come in, the, the ones I have anyways, they do come in in different size balls or yeah, skeins, whatever you want to call it. But uh, the ones I have are all 25 grams. So unless you're making a part of an amigurumi, which is what most of these colors were for, like uh, I bought them when I was making primarily and exclusively dolls. And so they were going to be the clothes and they were fine for that. But now it's like so small, I don't know what to do with them. And uh, I've had them for a long time and I kind of just want to move them out so I can make room for new stuff or make room for the already bought new stuff I have. So I figured I'm going to go and um, hold two together and not worry about color changes. And I got so ambitious, I filled up. I filled up this bag, the, my billy bag, full of those yarns. See, it's full of the yarn. Ah, can't see it. <sighs> Full of the yarn. Anyways, I have many, many skeins of it and I thought I would be able to work through quite a lot of it. Uh, no, I got bored very easily, but I did manage to make three. So this is uh, an egg cat. It's called an egg cat. This is egg cat. This is a pattern by Lilis, I believe. Lilis or Lilies. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Uh, she does thing. She does spell it in a different way. Anyways, I love her work. Like ever since I started making Amigurumi, I have been looking at her work and saying, I want to make one of her stuff. Um, but I never bought one of her patterns because she arguments her, her uh, Amigurumi's with fabric. So like it'll have this cute little patch on the bottom of the feet or instead of making like a muzzle out of uh uh out of yarn she would just put fabric in it and it looked so adorable but i don't like to sew and every time i looked at it i'm like oh my gosh it's so beautiful uh, but you know i could still crochet it without that and i just wasn't confident that i'd make a really really nice one uh, that I would be satisfied with it. So I never bought one of her patterns, but I found this one in her blog for free. And so I thought, mm, and this one didn't have any fabric on it. Her one is still better. Uh, I decided to use the scrap that I have and I was hoping, um, I would finish. I did finish one of the light pinks really quickly. Uh, but I made the wrong choice on the color I replaced it with because even though if you hold the two yarns together, they looked different. Um, once it's worked up with a different color, it looks like the same. So it didn't have any of the nice stripes and the interesting color changes. Because of that, I didn't get color change until the bottom. But anyways, whatever. I liked it. The point of this thing was to use up yarn and just continue adding yarn as I needed it. And that's what I did. So I finished that one. And once I finished that one, I decided to join the Octo Party cow. 
So it's, uh, yeah, it's hashtag OctoPartyCow. And so I made a couple more Octos with this. So I made, was this one first? No. I made this one first. Uh, you could see some of the color changes. Very little of it because it's small. And then I made this one. And it's cute. I love these. I love these Octos. I mean, she has a different pattern out now and I considered getting it. I looked at it, but I just like the shape of these ones better. Uh, and I'm sure she'll come out with more that I'll probably like or not like. Well, I like them. I shouldn't say not like. I like them. I like them very, very much. It's just that these two, the traditional ones, are my favorite. And so uh, I decided I'll just stick with this one. So I made two more, two octos, and then I lost stamina for this thing. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to hold two yarns together and just, you know, make whatever and leave it to the process to figure out how it's turned out. I can't find my next project. Oh, here it is. Okay, leave it to the process to figure out how it's turned out. I don't want to do that anymore. But I still wanted to make small projects because, I don't know, I just wanted... I guess the immediate satisfaction of finishing something that I started. So I um, I had gone to Hobie, not not to the yarn store, but to their pattern store not so long ago. And I was looking at their amigurumi and I found this hot chocolate amigurumi. So I decided to make that. So I was looking at my pattern. It was, uh, my, my husband likes to sleep in, so. It wasn't, it was pretty early in the morning and my son and I were looking and we, uh, I was looking through patterns and I'm like, I think I want to make this to him. And he goes, can you make it for me? So I said, okay, let's go sneak into the bedroom and then uh, you could choose the yarn colors you want of the cup because the chocolate's going to be chocolate, the whipped cream's going to be whipped cream. And he's like, okay. And so we came here, we looked through my working yarn, which is uh, what I call yarn that has already been used for a project, but is enough to continue making amigurumi with. And he chose this color. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm making this up. And uh, my daughter comes and she's like, what you making? So I show her the picture and she's like, oh, can you make me one too? So we did the whole process again. We snuck in here and she chose her color, which is this gray. This is basic stitch. Uh, yeah, basic stitch gray white. Uh, this one is La Mia Diamond, and this is Premier Basics in chocolate, and the white is Big Twist Value in white. So, for the past couple of days, I have been making <laughs> mugs, and seriously. What was nice about having one kid is they said, mommy, I want that. And I made it for them and it was done. It was over. I didn't have to make another one. But now I have to make two of everything they find cute. <laughs> Anyways, I was much, much, much more motivated to finish this one than I am to finish this one. Can you see my fingers? To finish this one than I am to finish this one. I'm actually going to bring my camera down a little bit so you can see the mugs. There we go. Anyway, so that's all my finished objects. I know it's a lot. Uh, you know, I wasn't cooking. The water, the hardest part of no ha having no gas was the water was cold, like really, really cold. And it got to the point where, you know, if my kids had toast, I was like, don't put those dishes in the sink. Don't put it in the sink, we'll use it for lunch. Just because I didn't want to use the cold water to wash dishes. Uh, but because it was cold, I wasn't doing much, much of anything and there was no stove. So I wasn't, um, I wasn't cooking. And so I had a lot of time to crochet and I did. I crocheted a lot. I have, so those are all my finished objects, but that's not all I worked on. Obviously I worked a little bit on my son's t-shirt, which uh, I think I could work on it more. Uh, I would be motivated to work on it more if I could figure out how to do the neckline. Um, I'm obviously going to have to go back and make it smaller because it's too big, but this is how big it has to be to fit around his neck. So I need to figure out how to make uh, some sort of stretchy material over here so that he could actually put it on. 
so I did work on this a little bit. Um, I don't have a stitch marker. I didn't keep a progress creeper. So I can't tell you exactly how much I worked on it, but I did work on it a little bit. I am not at the point where I could start the body yet. I'm still doing the bib. I don't know what it's called. The bib of it, I guess. I also did some knitting. I finished up uh, my cupcake yarn. So I, I don't know if you remember, but I have two skeins of the cupcake yarn, but I want to make a wrap. And so I have, uh, I have chosen some colors, which I've shown in a previous video. I think the last video I did, um, to, Ooh, I'm putting my shadow in, um, I, to supplement, to take things. So I finished one cupcake, which is up to here. And then I started on the paint box yarns over here. I have finished the gray and I've started on the purple part and my, my idea is basically I I did the cupcake on this end and I'll finish it with the other cupcake on the other end. And in the middle, I will have complementing colors in uh, that I have already in my working yarn for DK, my working DK yarn, which I really, really want to get through. And so um, I chose about I chose four colors. I finished one stripe of the other. There'll be two stripes of each of these colors. I finished one stripe of one color. I'm working on the second stripe. And then I will do the rest as the time comes. This was also something I was doing a lot to keep myself warm because I was able to drape it around my knees better than even the hug me shawl. So I did work on it quite a bit. This was where I was the last time you saw me. So I worked on it quite a bit. For knitting anyways, I'm slow. I'm slow in crochet too. Uh, but I'm slower in knitting. And then finally... My last whip, which who knows how long these ones will take since I want, I am wanting the instant gratification of just finishing projects right now. I don't know how long it's going to take for me to finish these projects, meaning this knit one, the t-shirt, but my last one is again yarn that was sent to me during the yarn swap by Diana. This is Mandela Gnome. And this is the lemon peel stitch, which is the first time I'm using it, and I'm really loving it. And I decided to do a C2C baby blanket because my cousin is having a baby. So this is for the baby when she comes. <laughs> and this is how much I got done. It's really nice, but I can't seem to focus on these long projects right now. I just want short, easy, quick projects. And uh, I want to make bunnies. I'm going to make another bunny. Uh, I got to tell you, I love bunnies. Um, when I say bunnies, I mean toy bunnies. I love the traditional toy floppy bunnies. Um, I love all types, almost every type of amigurumi bunny I've seen, except for the realistic ones. They appeal to me. Eh, it's okay. It's the same as other patterns. But as far as bunnies go, the traditional long ears, sometimes floppy ears, sometimes straight ears like that. Uh, long bodies, long legs. I just love them. And I don't celebrate Easter, but seriously, during Easter time, all these cute bunnies, they just pop up. Everywhere you look, there's a bunny picture. Like, you go on an Etsy, and uh, all year around, you won't see a bunny, but near Easter, there's pictures of bunnies in your suggestions. You go to Pinterest, pictures of bunnies on your suggestion. And so, I want to finish this little cup that I have right now going right now and I want to make a bunny um I have bought a pattern yeah I'm supposed to not be buying patterns right now I'm not quite on a pattern ban but uh I have uh, decided that if I buy a pattern it is something that I need to work up right away because um I'm not good with finishing the patterns that I buy um I have patterns that I bought like three, four years ago still that I need to work up. And what's really horrible about having patterns that old is that when I bought the pattern, I thought I could learn a lot from it. And I could have, don't get me wrong. I could have learned a lot from them. But uh, since then, through my own experimentations, through other patterns, I have learned what that would have taught me. And you know, some of it was from free patterns, some of it was from other paid for patterns. But the point is, when I look back on that pattern, I'm thinking of one in particular, 
I'm kind of like dragging my feet and making it because I've kind of outgrown it. So I have made this deal with myself that I will not make buy any more. I don't know if this is really going to work out, but I will try not to buy any more doll patterns. So when I say doll patterns, I mean patterns of a doll. I love making dolls. I mean, there she is. But I've got to the point where I could design a doll pretty easily. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been in a block, but I still was able to finish her. Whereas the bird pattern that I was working on took me forever. So I've gotten to the point where I could do a doll pattern pretty easily. And even if I can't, I have designed enough bases, like doll bases, where I could just look at the pattern and change up the clothes or change up the details. I have done enough of that that I re and I have bought enough doll doll patterns that I already have in my library that I could if I feel like making one of those type of dolls I could just use one of those I could use one of my own patterns that I am not going to buy any more doll patterns um I found a doll pattern that I'm in love with I really really did but I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to be a good girl. <laughs> I hope one day that I win one of Dana from Dana and Wonderless Crochet's pattern giveaways. I really do because I'm telling you, I'm going to get that doll pattern if I get it. <laughs> I'm not likely. I'm not likely to win it. Most of the time I don't win anything. But seriously, if I win it, I'm going to get that doll pattern. Um... I have decided to stick to animal patterns because animals, as far as designing, doesn't come quite so easy to me. And I have a lot to learn in designing animals and working patterns will help me get through that. Does that explanation sound believable? Let's just say it does, okay? I let myself buy animal patterns, but, but I restrict myself by saying, well, uh, it will... Will the owner of the gallery I sell, my amigurumi, uh, like that pattern? And uh, I restricted to that. And I also restricted to something that I could make right now. So unless it's on like a super sale, I won't buy it unless I know I can work on it like right now, right away. And so I bought a bunny pattern and then Tiffany um, I forgot her channel name. I'll link it down below. She comes out with a super, super, um, cute bunny. And I'm like, oh, which one do I want to make? I know I should make the one I actually paid for. I do. Uh, but okay. It's crochet with Tiffany Hansen. She came out with a super cute bunny that I really want to make. It's on her uh, YouTube channel and she ha she's selling you the pattern itself on her Etsy page, at Etsy store. So if you want to go check that out, you can. But right now I'm torn. I don't know which bunny I want to make more. Uh, and I also know myself enough to know that I get bored easily. So if I make one of the bunnies, I might not make the other. Because even though I love bunnies, it is two bunnies in a row. Three bunnies in a row, considering, well, not in a row, because I whipped uh, the octos and the cat and the hot chocolates. But I just finished that one, too. I don't know what to do. Help me, please. I am not supposed to be buying patterns unless I'm going to work it up right away. I'm not, and I bought a pattern. So I should stick to that one, right? I should stick to that one. I really should. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know. I'm crazy. <laughs> I really want to make that bunny. Hmm. Anyways, I hope you liked my video. It was a bit rambly. I apologize for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Uh, if you'd like to hear more from me, please subscribe. Thanks. Bye. You'll find out if I make a which bunny I make next video, I guess.